Hi, it's me again, Jen. And in this video, we will need to talk about the two types of hypothesis. The first one is the null hypothesis, denoted by HO. And the second one is the alternative hypothesis, denoted by HA. So why is a hypothesis important? It is important because it is the starting point of any research investigation. To define, hypothesis is a premise or claim that you want to test or investigate. So for example, boys are better than girls in manipulative skills. So that is a state the statement that requires an investigation or test. It is something that we want to prove or disprove. Hypothesis is also an, an educated guess about something in the world around you. So it might be an observation. And the statement should be testable, either by experiment or observation. So you may conduct um, survey, observation, or experiment to test your hypothesis, whether it's or not. Or not. Hypothesis is an assumption about a population parameter. This assumption may or may not be true. And hypothesis is a supposition or proposed explanation made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point of further investigation. So a working hypothesis is an educated guess that a researcher made about the chosen sample used in the study. So, for example, there is a significant correlation between interest in science and the career choice of high school graduates in science. Or, you can have a statement, um, modular learning is more effective in developing the higher order thinking skills of the learners than online learning. So those are claims, statements, assumptions, educated guesses, or possible explanation of a phenomena that still requires experimentation or investigation. We can have also this one. Online learning has no effect in improving students' academic performance. You can also have a claim, boys have better mathematics performance than girls. And we also have, there is no significant difference between traditional teaching method and constructivist teaching method. And we can also hypothesize that there is a significant correlation between math and science performance. So all of these can be proven or tested through experiment or investigation. So there are two types of hypothesis. We have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So in null hypothesis, this means that there is no significant difference between the expected mean and the observed mean. There might be a um, slight change or a slight difference but still they are considered statistically equal. So to define, the null hypothesis proposes that there is no significant difference between certain characteristics of a population. For example, boys and girls have equal performance in math expressed this way. 
there is no significant difference between the math performance of boys and girls. So the characteristic that being compared in this example is the performance of boys and girls in math. So in the null hypothesis, we can say that there is no difference between boys and girls. So therefore, we can say that gender has no bearing in the mathematics performance. However, the hypothesis can be rejected or accepted. It is rejected if we have gathered enough evidences for us to say with some degree or level of confidence that the hypothesis is false. So in the event that the null hypothesis is rejected, therefore the alternative hypothesis is true. This means that alternative hypothesis proposes that there is a significant difference between certain characteristics of a population. In this case, the mathematics performance of boys and girls are being compared and in this alternative hypothesis, they are different. So we can say, boys and girls have different math performance. Or, there is a significant difference between the math performance of boys and girls. It could either be boys have better performance in math or girls have better performance in math. So we can have another set of example where we have here there is no significant difference between modular learning and online learning in terms of improving students' performance. Here, we are comparing the students' performance of those under modular learning and for those under online learning. So null hypothesis says that they are statistically equal. The performance is just statistically equal. This means that um, the mode of learning has no bearing in the student's performance. But if this is rejected, therefore, the alternative hypothesis is true, stating that there is a significant difference between modular learning and online learning in terms of improving student's performance. That is actually two-tailed test. But we can have one-tailed test saying that modular learning is better than online learning in terms of improving students' performance. Or online learning is better than modular learning in terms of improving students' performance. Okay? So here are some examples of null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis assumes there is no relationship, no effect, no difference between two variables and that controlling one variable has no effect on the other. So for example, in our experiment, we have a cat. So giving cat food with different shapes. So if we state the null hypothesis here, Cats show no preference for food based on shape. So this means that whatever shape of food you give to this cat, he or she will eat it. But if the null hypothesis is rejected, then we can say that cats have preference for food based on shape. Another example. An experiment under um, growing or controlled condition wherein we have two plants and the, the first plant is affected by yellow light color while the other is affected by the pink light color. So if we state the null hypothesis, plant growth is not affected by light color. But if this is rejected, then the alternative hypothesis is true, stating that plant growth is affected by light color. So the third example would be comparing the 
the musical abilities of the adults and the teens. So if you would state the null hypothesis, you would say age has no effect on musical ability. And if this null hypothesis is rejected, then the alternative hypothesis is true, stating that age has effect on musical ability. So another example of alternative hypothesis in uh, experimental environment. Supposing you want to test the effectiveness of biofertilizer X on plant growth. So the null hypothesis or HO would say application of biofertilizer X do not increase plant growth. So there is no significant change, no significant improvement or growth. And if this is rejected, then we can accept the null hypothesis stating that the application of biofertilizer X increases plant growth. Okay? So let's have these examples. So any research investigation should start with the problem statement or the question and followed by the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So for example, are teens better at math than adults? So the null hypothesis would be age has no effect on mathematical ability because we are talking about um, the teens and the adults or we are referring to age as a variable. You can also say the state the alternative hypothesis this way or HA. Age has effect on mathematical ability. Second example. Does taking aspirin every day reduce the chance of having a heart attack? So the null hypothesis can be stated this way. Taking aspirin daily does not affect heart attack, a heart attack risk. The alternative hypothesis, taking aspirin daily affects heart attack risk. Third, do teens use cell phones to access the internet more than adults? So we are comparing the characteristics of age here. So the null hypothesis would be age has no effect on how cell phones are used for internet access. And the alternative hypothesis would be age has effect on how cell phones are used for internet access. And lastly, we can investigate that. Do cats care about the color of their food? So we are talking about the preferences of cats towards the color of their food. So the null hypothesis would be cats express no food preference based on color. And the alternative hypothesis would be cats express food preference based on color. So there you go. Those are the two types of hypothesis, the non-hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. I hope you enjoy and learn from this video. Thank you so much.